Hey everybody, this is Pastor Tyler Baker of Valiant Baptist Church, and we are located in the Jacksonville, Florida area. So I'm coming to you with kind of an impromptu, candid video here. Thursday night, I just got back from soul winning, and I've had something on my mind recently, and that's due to some comments that I've received on YouTube. Uh, uh, quite a few over the past couple weeks, and, and yay, I've gotten them over the, the course of the existence of the channel's history. And it's on the subject of whether or not every person at all times in their life can be saved. Or more specifically, whether or not God desires every person at all times in their life to be saved. Now, I can tell when people um, comment on this subject that they are very bothered by what I am teaching. You can tell that they're very offended. You can tell that it makes them very uncomfortable. I can tell that they feel like what I'm teaching is very wrong and they, they believe that it's unscriptural. But I'm going to prove my position in this video without a shadow of a doubt, very plainly, very easily. It's gonna be very, very clear with clear scripture. And I'll explain it uh, in a very simple way. So first I wanna begin very simply, and that is with John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And all we have to do is put our faith in him and we'll be saved and have eternal life. We're born again. We're saved forever. We can never lose our salvation. But notice that it says God so loved the world. So of course, God loved the world. God, Jesus Christ died for the sins of the whole world and God wants everyone to be saved. Second Peter chapter three, verse nine says that the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness but is long-suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God is not willing or God does not want anyone to die and to go to hell. God gives opportunities for people to be saved. God sends preachers. God intervenes. The Bible teaches that on the day of judgment, no one will have an excuse when they stand before God. God has written the law in their hearts. And not only that, God has placed everyone in a specific way, in a specific place uh, on this planet. The Bible says in, in the book of Acts that he determined before the bounds of their habitation, if, my, if they might uh, you know, happily seek after them, I'm paraphrasing, that he might be found. So God put everyone in a specific place and he gives them you know, a little bit of light. He gives them information. If they continue to seek after him, they will find him and they will hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. But what happens is, and God desires for everyone to be saved, but what happens is people, they grow up and, and uh, you know, they're, they're children, they're innocent, they grow up and they have some have the opportunity, especially those that live in the United States of America, they have the opportunity to hear the gospel. They have the opportunity to respond to the gospel. They hear the good news. They hear about Jesus and they reject it. And they go down this path where they just become more and more wicked, where they keep rejecting it, where they start to hate God, Right? The Bible teaches very clearly that there are people that get to a point after they've repeatedly rejected the gospel that now God no longer wants them to be saved, that God no longer even wants them to hear the gospel, and he actually prevents them from being saved. Now, he so loved the world, he loved that person, but they rejected him, and they continually rejected him, and as a result, God rejected them and listen to me, this is what the Bible teaches. I'm gonna show you very clearly. He no longer wants them to be saved. Now I'm gonna show you from the most, I believe the clearest place in the entire Bible. This is 2 Thessalonians chapter number two. And this is what the Bible says. It says this, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. And then it says this, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. So notice these people had the opportunity to receive the gospel, to receive the truth, but they, they rejected it and they did not want to be saved. So they rejected the gospel. Then it says this in verse number 11, and for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Now, did you notice that? It says that God, so because they had rejected him, it says as a result of that or consequently, God shall send them strong delusion. And then it says this, that they should believe a lie. Now notice God is not the one that's sending the lie. Calvinists will say, see, God is sending them a lie because they make him out to be, you know, like the author of sin even because he controls everything in their perverted world. No, he sends them a strong delusion so that they 
would or should believe a lie. So notice the delusion is not the lie. It's the state of delusion. He blinds their eyes like the Bible says elsewhere. So he causes them or puts blinders over top of them, over top of their eyes so that they are not capable of believing. It says this one more time. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. So notice that he desires, the whole purpose why he sent them this strong delusion is because he desires for them to believe a lie. Now, why does he desire for them to believe the lie? Listen to this, verse 12. That, notice that word, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So what is the reason why God is sending them strong delusion? It's so that they would believe the, the lie and why? so that they would all be damned. So the whole reason, ultimately, the reason why God sends them a strong delusion and causes them to be delusional, he, he, he blinds their eyes and hardens their heart, is so that they would believe a lie and so that they would be damned, so that they would not go to heaven. Notice that God does not want or God does not desire this person to be saved anymore. Now, a person would say, oh, that contradicts. No, it does not. He wanted this person to be saved, obviously, before he sent the strong delusion. So God still loves the whole world. He loved that person. Every person in the world, God has loved. But then they rejected him. There came a time when they rejected him and God ultimately rejected them. You know, he wanted them to be saved, but they rejected him. And consequently, he rejected them. I'm going to show you this in another place, in John chapter number 12. John chapter number 12, verse number 37 says this, but though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him. That the saying of Isaiah, that's Isaiah of the Old Testament, that the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spake. Lord, who hath believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Verse 39, therefore they could not believe because that Isaiah said again. Notice it says they could not believe. They're incapable. It's not possible for them to believe. It says they could not believe. It's not possible. The end of verse 39. Because that Isaiah said again, he hath blinded their eyes and hardened their heart. That's God. God blinded their eyes and hardened their heart that they should not see with their eyes nor understand with their heart and be converted and I should heal them. So notice very clearly the Bible teaches that God blinded their eyes and hardened their heart that they should not see with their eyes and believe with their heart. So notice God did this so that they would not believe. That's why it says that they could not believe and that's because God sent them strong delusion. He caused them to not be able to to believe the truth, to not be able to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and to put their faith in the gospel. This is what the Bible teaches. You know, if you believe the Bible, you just believe the Bible, no matter what, whether it makes you uncomfortable, whether it makes you, you know, whether it even feels wrong to you in the beginning, you believe what it says. If you know for sure that that's what it says, then you believe it if you're a Bible believer. It's God's word. So the Bible plainly teaches that God so loved the whole world and God wants everyone to be saved, but everyone's not going to be saved. God reaches out and gives opportunities to people. God puts people in a specific place on this planet at a specific time and so that they would have the opportunity to be saved. And when they reject him and they keep rejecting him, God ultimately rejects them. This is known as the reprobate doctrine. It's also very clearly taught in Romans chapter number one. Romans chapter number one teaches the exact same thing, that when people reject God, God ends up rejecting them. One thing that people will say is they'll have this Calvinist type of mindset, and they'll say this, well, God already knew that those people wouldn't believe, so he just blinded their eyes and hardened their heart. That, that makes no sense at all. That doesn't even make sense. Yes, they've already rejected him numerous times, but what would be the point of even blinding their eyes and hardening their heart if some of the, if none of them would have believed and God knows that they wouldn't have believed. 
The point stands, and I know that it bothers some people, but it's that God does not desire certain people to be saved any longer. He does not want them to. It says that God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Notice that the whole point that he sends them strong delusion is ultimately that they all might be damned. That's what the Bible teaches, my friend. If you love the Bible, if you love the Lord Jesus Christ, if you believe the Bible, you know, uh, and you're a Bible believer, you claim to be a Bible believer, you need to just accept what it says, even if it makes it makes you feel uncomfortable. And the reason why it makes you feel uncomfortable is because what you presently and currently believe is wrong and incorrect. And God does not desire every person at all times in their life to be saved. Hey, there is Joe Schmo down the street that maybe heard the gospel one time and rejected. He doesn't necessarily hate God, and uh, we need to go knock on his door. You know, if he's 50, 60, he might even be 70 years old. He, you know, that doesn't mean that he hates God and that God hates, you know, him and has rejected him. You know, this is specifically talking about people who have heard the gospel, they understood it very clearly, they rejected it, and then they grew to a place in their life where they hate God and they hate the gospel and they hate the truth. And that's who it's talking about. And those type of people exist. And the Bible is very clear on this subject. So we need to just believe the Bible no matter, you know, how it makes us feel. Or we should detach our emotions, you know, and just believe the, the word of God. God bless you and have a good day.